10 o'clock. We are expecting a few more people, but they can um, join in as they come. So welcome to this meeting um, to discuss SAMPRA and royalty payments. It will be led by Dave Hotchkiss, yeah, which uh, needs no introduction. Because I have a very good idea of what's Okay, I have mute. There we go. We're led by Dave, who I'm sure needs no introduction. He's a radio expert. So it's much and much much up to date with Sampra and everything that's going on with that. So I'll hand over to you, Dave. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Natalie. Hi, Francois, Rekus, Peter, Sean, Vilma, Odile, Titch, Michelle. Uh, impact, whose impact is um, there? I'm not sure. Okay, there you are. Great. <laughs> um, welcome, everyone, to uh, uh, Michelle Kutsia, too. Uh, two from and Michelle Lorenz. So that's good to have everyone on board here. Um, the format this morning, I'm just going to I go through the basics of what the copyright is about. Uh, that shouldn't take, I've just, I think there are three, three, or four, three slides or so. Um, and then we need to have some discussion and I think we should be done within an hour, I hope. Um, let's, let's just pray before we start. Father, I thank you for this means of sharing and communication and fellowship. And Lord, I pray that as we look at this whole copyright issue, that we'll see what you're saying to us and that we'll be able to encourage each other. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Um, okay, so I'm going to go to share screen and uh, as I say, I've just got a few slides here. Um, right. Um, that's just the introduction. No, Let's see, does it go? Natalie, how do I advance this now? Um, it's not advancing. Um, okay. Let me just press, just click or press enter. Okay, let's go with that. Uh, for some reason, and if I go down, no, I might have to go out of full screen on that. Let's just stop share. Sorry. Um, go here. Um, okay, now if I now go on to, okay, let's just go down like that. Uh, it's not ideal, but it works. Okay, so there are two types, I, you know, I think that we all use music as part of our radio content. And the point here is that we need to um, work together with the Christian, well, with the music industry um, so that they can be sustainable and we can be sustainable. So that is, you know, that is a long-term goal. Just in terms of uh, copyright, there are two types of musicians that are recognized. There's the composers who are paid by Samro and Capasso. Uh, depending, uh, Samra does broadcasting and public performance, Capasa does internet, it's technically a um, format change uh, payment. Um, I think um, pretty well everyone here is a licensed broadcaster, so we're paying Samra, and we've been doing that for a while. <laughs> we don't like doing it, but uh, we do, that's, that's kind of accepted. We haven't paid performing artists because in the past, performing artists get paid by the record companies and CD sales and so on. Um, these days, uh, that income stream has dried up 
because of the digital revolution. So performing artists are paid by public performances. Uh, that is unchanged. Digital sales, that is something new. And by SAMPRA. And it's this third income stream for, for performing artists. This is performing artists and record companies. I, it, it, it all goes in, in, that, in that package. Um, so it's the SAMPRA that we're going to be looking at today. Um, SAMPRA has many groups that they hope will pay them. Um, relevant for us as radio and TV stations are firstly, uh, SAMPRA likes, would like to be paid by the public broadcaster. And there's a multi-million rand legal dispute between SABC and SAMPRA. I don't think it's been settled yet. Um, it's been going on for years and the lawyers have made a lot of money out of it. Secondly, commercial broadcasters, that was in the courts for many years as well. It has been settled. Commercial broadcasters are paying 3% of turnover to SAMPRA. Then we sit here, community broadcasters and internet music users. Uh, this is, is where the discussion for today is. Um, up to now, there's been no pressure. Well, there has not yet been any pressure on community broadcasters to pay SAMPRA as far as I know. SAMPRA has uh, focused in on the internet music users for some reason, um, but we can, you know, it, it's all part of the same story. Then the conclusion for us um, is that there's no one to spend millions of rand in litigation to negotiate an optimum universal rate. You see, what the commercial broadcasters did is they worked together with NAB, they hired lawyers, and they got it sorted. Um, we haven't got the money to do that. Community is just too diverse. Every station is different. Is, there's more diversity in community than there is in commercial. And um, I, the community broadcasters, ACM probably represents about 10%. NAB, which includes ACM, about 15% or 15 to 20%. And um, the other 80, or at least 75% is NCRF. And then there are a few that are not affiliated anywhere. Um, to get this whole lot to determine a reasonable royalty would be extremely difficult. And I don't know if uh, that reasonable royalty is in the Copyright Act, which says that SAMPRA, that we are obliged to pay a reasonable royalty uh, negotiated with SAMPRA. Um, now, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to, that's more or less the, the wording there that is from the NAB lawyer, um, Peter Greeley, that I met with on behalf of NAB, NAB stations and ACM. Um, SAMPRA, the way in their communications this point two here wants us all to pay a fixed annual fee plus five and a half percent of our turnover. That is what they've been demanding from the internet stations. And I, as far as I can, I've seen all their letters of demand are around about those kind of figures, which is higher than um, they're demanding from the commercial well, they probably started there with the commercial guys, but the commercial guys have knocked them down to 3%. Um, but they cannot enforce this without an agreement. So the trick here is we do not sign their um, unilateral enforced agreement that they want us to sign. 
because otherwise we're agreeing to those terms and we've got no obligation to agree to those terms. Um, my third point here is that community broadcasters are, are already contributing massively to our local artists by playing 80% local music. Um, so it doesn't make sense to then penalize us further with 5.5% of our turnover. And turnover is a horrible way to do it anyway, because you can't win. If you have a you know, good year, then you pay more on your income. If you have a bad year, you pay more on your expenses. So um, it, it's not a happy situation. Um, so this is a way ahead that I think we need to talk around. Um, firstly, we've got a bit of work to do to work out what else we are doing for our artists and try, put, try and put a monetary value on it. I think uh, ICASA requires us in our local music reports. Well, I mean, I don't think I know it requires us. Um, and we can add in there by um, our interviews with local artists and so on. There are a number of suggestions that ICASA gives us to get some points towards our local music quota. Um, those are also things that add value to our local artists. So uh, we can assign airtime value to it. Secondly, we can work out how much Sampra music we actually use and what revenue it's generating for us. If your music station playing 90% Sampra music, then possibly 5% turnover may be reasonable. But if you hardly use any Sampra music, then you've got quite a different argument. And uh, the same would apply to internet stations. Podcasts, for example, if you look at your podcast, um, uh, uh, the you know, various programs on internet to help you develop podcasts, the trend is not to use any copyright music. You, you buy music that is available for podcasting. And, um, you know, as an internet station, you can work on a policy that you're not going to use Sampra music. It, it could be possible. As a licensed broadcaster, it may be more difficult. But certainly if you're using very little Sampra music, um, you can then try and put a monetary value onto that in your negotiation with Sampra. The point here is to determine what is reasonable. Um, some of the uh, letters that I've seen from Sampra have not been reasonable, um, but others have. So, you know, we've, we've got to then decide how we're going to do that and push them towards being reasonable. And I think that, you know, as far as ACM is concerned, as far as NAB is concerned, well, NAB says that uh, they're not, they don't want to negotiate on behalf of members. Um, it's up to each NAB station to work out the deal. Um, as far as ACM is concerned, I think we need to try and work together, but there is a big difference between a GNCR with 70% talk um, to uh, you know, an impact, which probably has a much higher percentage of music. Um, so we've, you know, we'll have slightly different discussions and um, slightly different starting points with Sampra. At this point, I, I don't know if any of you, I know the internet guys have, and if you have been approached, it's, it's, it's in relation to your internet stream and not in relation to your licensed broadcasting. Sampra has said that NAB is negotiating on our behalf. NABC, NAB says it is not. 
So <laughs> there's an interesting um, thing there. Um, I think that's that's my slides. I don't know if I can, do you want me to leave this up or can I close this? Um, I'm going to stop share, then we can kind of see each other a little bit better. Um, and let's have a little bit of discussion. I see that a couple of things in the chat. Let's just see what's there. Okay, please define Sampra music. <laughs> yes, okay, two questions the same. Um, you should be able to get an answer to that from Sampra. Um, it should be on their website. It must be on their website. They can't charge you for using music without telling you what they're charging for. I haven't actually looked for it, but my assumption is that it is there. If it's not, they must supply it. Otherwise, you can't negotiate anything reasonable without knowing what you're negotiating. Um, but that is, is a very good start. Um, and we need to know what it is. Any other questions, put a hand up or just chip in at this point or put something on, on the chat. Comments, how does that make you feel? <laughs> Peter, Kirti? Yeah, so I was just typing, <clears throat> but um, I, I, I don't, I, I don't want to put any suggestions. Right. But um, I think you know, for community radio stations, um, why don't they just take a percentage of the Samro um, details? Because I mean, Samro does the the publisher and the composer, but. Obviously, if let's say Kurt Darren, for instance, writes uh, or didn't write the song, but he's performing that song, but we've played that song, then surely, you know, that money that we paid Samro must in a percentage must go to the, to the artist because of performing rights. But I also like the idea of, you know, putting a RAND value to the actual airtime that we offer artists um, either doing live performances or promoting new album or new releases. Because if we can put a monetary value on that, and that exceeds, let's say, for instance, even more what, we, what we, we're paying in summer, then surely that must also be taken into account. Yeah, yeah. But just your suggestion about the, the Sampra Samra. The problem is that these copyright societies are member-based. So you... Samro members are your composers, your Sampra members are your performing artists and your record companies. So they come from a, a, a different, um, you, you can't just relate the one to the other. Uh, they're completely different. Most songs are not sung by the composer. And uh, so there is a, a you know, a little kind of crossover, but it's it's not big enough to work on. GNCR, Michelle? Just asking maybe a silly question, but say we went to Sampra website and the music they listed there, we don't play, we don't then have to pay anything, is it? So Correct. we've just got to see which artists and which songs we do play. Yes. Okay. I think with your case, with only 30% music and the music that you play is, um, it's, it's not mainstream. Um, there's a possibility that you could get away with no Sampra music. That's my feeling. Um, you may need to just select a little bit more carefully. But a radio station that's playing top gospel artists, uh, you will be, you know, most of them will be registered with Sampra. And it's not worth their while not registering with Sampra because uh, they will rely on music uh, from the commercial guys. 
But if there are Christian artists that are not in mainstream um, and are not members, you know, if most of your Christian artists are not mainstream, then uh, there's a possibility also that you could, because um, you're looking at 80% local, uh, there's a possibility that you could duck around not playing Sampra members. Um, if, if it's worth it, or if you can prove to Sampra, this is your playlist, um, this is your typical playlist for this last month, um, only 2% are Sampra members. Um, uh, therefore, uh, we, you know, we shouldn't be, we should pay a minimal amount. And the airtime of that 2% is, is negligible. Um, and therefore, we shouldn't be uh, paying, you know, it's a small part of your turnover. Um, yeah, I mean, it, the, the recourse here, will ACM uh, work out a reasonable royalty and negotiate on behalf of members? The problem, Rikos, is that, uh, you know, what is reasonable for GNCR may not be reasonable for Teichabach. Um, because they are 70% talk, 30% music, no mainstream music. Whereas... Um, you rely much more on mainstream, well, certainly on the more popular artists. I, I don't know, but until you've done, and I'm, I can't do the homework for every station, I don't know what all your playlists are. But I think that once you, you know, you come up with uh, some answers to those questions, yes, we could look at it. And we could base it on, um, you know, we need to just think this out because they are basing it on turnover. Um, and you could look at your, you know, percentage um, of uh, Sampra music and then multiply that into your 5% that they're asking. So it, it could be, you know, 10% of 5%. Um, that you should be paying or base it on the commercial guys, 3%. And let's say that the commercial guys are playing 100% Sampra and you're only playing 10%. Uh, therefore, you should only be paying 0.3%. Now, that is the, the uh, you know, the, the kind of argument that, that we need to be working on. But I, th I think that each station, you need to do a little bit of homework on pulling out your sample. And perhaps uh, if it is more difficult, as I said, I should have actually gone to the website, and, but it's, it's, a, it's a long list and I'm not that familiar with all the, all the artists. So it's, it's going to take someone a little bit of time um, to try and sort through that. But I assume it's on a database that's searchable alphabetically. Vilma? Hi, everyone. Um, Dave, as I understood it, and I might be totally wrong, um, if we talk about performing artists, we're not talking just about the singer. We no. are also talking about the drummer and the trumpeter and the, whoever plays the keyboard and whatever. Yeah. So, so say, for instance, um, there is now a song sang by Luisa Barlow, and he might be a Sampra artist. All the other performing artists that are part of the production, we don't know who they are. Those um, details don't get published with the song and the performing, well, in our case, talking about a performing artist, the actual person singing the song. How are you going to, because I'm looking at Sampra's website, there are 3,895 pages of names. And it might be Francia Boeto. Hello, Francia. I also want to both of them that you ate so lucky in the beginning. <laughs> um, but it might be Francia Boeto playing the keyboard. Um, on, you know, and who knows that? How are you ever going to calculate that? Yeah, I, I think that's a very valid problem. Um, we will never do it accurately. 
but I think we can get a feel uh, or a, uh, an estimate of where we are. Um, also working on the record companies and uh, we need, you know, it's, it's artists and record companies and I'm not sure how it's split. You see, I don't know how Sampra does their sums. And I think perhaps we need to do a little bit more homework on that. Um, hmm. Somebody, <laughs> maybe I need to, look, to do a bit more work on that one on behalf of ACM. Um, or if anyone else gets uh, more answers on that. It's just that Sampra, because of all the litigation that is ongoing, they are very tight with uh, their, they're not open with their figures. Um, so it's not easy to see who gets what. But they are, as far as I know, um, a nonprofit. But we need to just look at that and know that, you know, there should, we should be able to dig in there a bit. But it's, it's not going to be that easy, but we can see. And if we pick, for example, our top 10 artists that we play um, and see how many of them are Sampra uh, in terms of their record companies and their groups and the artists that they play with, It'll give us a good idea. Um, Sampra's argument is they, they kind of hit you with a sledgehammer. They say, we've got, you know, 30,000, but you see, this is throughout the world and we're looking at 80% local. Um, and they say, that, you know, all the music that you play is our music. But when you actually question artists that we, that you're playing, a lot of them are saying, no, we're not Sampra members. So um, it, 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 we need to do a little bit more work on that. And I think of each of us in our, in our, our playlists and, and just sit somebody, your music manager, you know, ask them to put an hour a day towards uh, just doing something around here and trying to get some answers. And let's share, you know, if there's an easy way to do it, can we separate out those pages of uh, Sampra members? Um, then uh, we, we, can, we can go there. Um, just some other questions here. Have any community stations already negotiated to deal with Sampra? No, as far as I know, but, but I may be wrong. Not that I know of. Um, am I correct in saying that Sampra are targeting streaming and internet services only? Up to now, yes, or up to fairly recently, uh, because they were under the misapprehension or misinformation that um, NAB was negotiating on our behalf. NAB is not negotiating on our behalf, so they may then start where they will start is the stations that have got money um because it's not worth wasting their time on stations that are you know turning over a couple of hundred thousand a year they'll start with the stations that are turning over millions a year and um that so it's it's the bigger stations that or the, the stations with a higher turnover um that I think we'll need to work extra hard at this. Velma? Yeah, Doug, just to say from the NAB side that um, also the um, advice we got from Peter Greeley, the lawyer, was that um, the NAB station should wait as well for the NCRF uh, mm -hmm. stations. Mm -hmm. Because um, I think we've got like 48 members out of over 200 community radio stations. Um, so, so our recommendation to Sampra is also go and negotiate with the NCRF, see what they come up with um, as far as a reasonable rate is, and we will start the negotiations yeah. then. 
Um, so we are not going to push this from the NIB side. Um, we agree that the, the, the artists should be paid in some other way. It's not that we don't want to do it, but um, we are not going to set the standard. Um, the NCRF have got over 200 members uh, in comparison to our 48. Go and negotiate with them and let's see what comes out of there. And then we will enter the negotiations as well. Yes, but I don't think SAMPRO will negotiate with the NCRF. The NCRF will not negotiate with SAMPRO. Um, so that's a lost cause. So I think that uh, SAMPRO will then um, target mm -hmm. the uh, stations with higher turnovers, which are mostly NAB and uh, um, ACM stations. It's not worth Sampra's while to try and negotiate with NCRF. They'll know they won't win anything. So um, all I'm saying is let us be prepared because I think that that's what will happen. Um, and it's not urgent at this point. As far as the uh, internet streaming services go, we just need to say we're licensed broadcasters. The stream is purely a simulcast. Um, and uh, uh, Sampra has said that they will not make a simulcast pay independently of the mainstream. So uh, that is the, the answer that uh, we need to give. Um, they, they're not going to double charge. Francois? Dave, um, can you hear me? I don't know if yes. my settings are correct. Um, I just want to check then, for instance, or, or in other words, we should not wait for anybody or organization to negotiate on our behalf. If we're being targeted or contacted by SAMPRO, we have to negotiate them with them on a, on a specific rate for our own station. That is, that is the rule. That is what, that's the way I see it. But don't get caught up negotiating your internet stream. Uh, just say this is purely a simulcast um, and, you, you know, Sampra has agreed that they will not do the two separately. Okay. Then if they're pushing you for the internet, I mean, for your mainstream FM, uh, just say, well, you know, what, where's Already. your... <laughs> You know, where there's your negotiation, um, you know, yes, we do need to pay, but we need to pay a reasonable rate. And this is what we're already doing uh, for local artists. We are playing 80% local music. Um, and uh, we, you know, don't believe that your 5.5% is reasonable. The commercial guys are paying 3%. Um, and we are not using 100% um, sample music, so it should be lower than that. No, that's, that's where I would start. Do you know if there's a specific implementation date where Sampra will say, okay, um, by the end of this year or the next year, we'll have all have to pay? Or you see, there will never, like I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, because the NCRF guys on the whole will just not, not pay. Then what? Uh, CAS is not going to take them off air for not paying, especially as they can show that what Sampra is demanding is not reasonable. I mean, that is your other tack. You can say, well, you know, what you're demanding is not reasonable. We're not going to pay. Um, when you come up with something reasonable, then we can talk and just put it off as long as possible. Uh, you know, it's just, we're just afraid that if they contact us and we set a specific um, percentage and they see that as the norm, um, that they're gonna expect that from all other stations. So, um, you know, it's difficult to say, should we inform ACM then, for instance, if they've been targeted us or targeting us to, to say, listen, this is what we've been negotiating or, 
Yeah, I think that's helpful. And I think that you should be clear, even in your agreement letter, what that figure is based on. Um, you know, is it, it's because you're, it, you know, you're 70% music or, or, and, uh, you know, I'm not sure what, and even though it's that most of you agree that most of your artists are registered with SAMPRA, you would like to um, contribute to them and you're happy to pay SAMPRA for that reason, uh, 3% or whatever you, you think is reasonable. You know, I don't think anyone should go over 3% because that has already been set by the commercial guys. Um, there's no reason why we should be paying more than them. So I think that precedent is there. And I think we should negotiate down on that. Um, and, you know, if you're predominantly a talk station, it should be way down if at all. But, you know, as Vilma says, you know, NAB has said, well, you know, if they want, but I don't think uh, SAMPRA is going to try and get a universal agreement with the community sections. I don't, well, I don't think they ever will. Um, that's enforceable. Um, or a date to enforce things because they can't take multiple stations uh, to court anyway. They'll pick one by one. Um, and, you know, if you do have to go to court, you've got the law there that says it must be reasonable. And you can use the commercial precedent as 3% um, as precedent and say, well, if, you know, that was negotiated as reasonable for commercial, Although that agreement specifically states that it is not universally applicable. It is purely an agreement with those stations. Um, so it's, it's not a legally binding thing, but obviously it is an indication. You know, I, I think in the end, we need to support the music industry but paying SAMPRA is not necessarily the best way of supporting the music industry. And we need to be just showing the other ways in which we're supporting the local music industry, because that's what they're gonna try and throw at you. Oh, you need to you know, pay these guys, you're using their music, you're making money out of them. Um, they need their share. And uh, that's where the discussion needs to be. But, you know, I think we need to just keep the channels open on this. Um, you know, if they, it'll be good to know if SAMPRA is putting pressure on you, you know, exactly how they're doing it so that others can be prepared. Um, and as I say, up to now, it's been just, they're targeting the internet streaming services, but they have made it very clear that they are not going to charge, uh, if your stream is purely a simulcast, you will not pay separately for that. And you just need to point out that this is a simulcast um, and uh, so we're not going to pay separately for it. Which may make them then look at your FM, but then you need to be prepared for that one too. But if you start paying five and a half percent on the simulcast, then uh, it may give them precedent to want your five and a half percent on your FM as well. Any, anything, anyone else wants to throw something in there? Um, I just want to say it's it's quite sad 
um, that we have to, I mean, we're already paying Samra for the, for the composer rights and stuff for playing the music. I've been a session musician myself as well, and I'm being paid for that session. Um, if I get booked for a gig, I'm being paid for that gig. Um, it's quite sad that we have to pay for everyone. I mean, that, that artist already gets, gets his fee for performing. Um, and yeah, I, I know it was yeah. to both sides. I know that, but it's, it's um, sure. Then, you know, the composer in, in, a lot of, in a lot of cases, the composer does not get paid for writing the song. Um, they only get the uh, mechanical royalties on the, on the song if it's played on radio. But the performing artists, they get paid for their performance as well as all the musicians on stage. Um, in studio for session work. So now we must pay them for the royalty on the music. I, I yeah, but you see, think. France, so the story is the money's got to come from somewhere. Okay, if it's a live performance, then it comes from, uh, one assumes the audience. Uh, if it's a studio performance, it's that studio or your record company that takes the big share of that Sampra money because they need the money to pay you guys that go into the studio. Uh, so that is how that that uh, money stream works. Um, I mean, it's quite interesting. Amazing. Yeah, in 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 the in the old days, of course, all music was live, um, so it was much simpler. And then radio came on the scene. Radio existed a long time before recorded music existed. Um, early radio, they used all radio music was live uh, for the first twenty years or so of radio. Um, and only kind of post sort of 1940s that the recording started. Um, so, and then of course that was the whole revolution of having recorded music, which added complications. And then, you know, within the last 10 years, we've got the whole digital revolution, which has totally changed things again. So, it's just a case of adapting each time, you know, to the new world, the old simple way of all music being live to some of it being on radio, but it was still live on radio to recorded. And now, of course, with digital recording, the every copy is the same as the master pretty well. So um, it, it's a different world. And we're just trying to adapt to it so that uh, the musicians, we can have music, but it's more difficult now for the musicians as well, because we've got all the music that goes back forever on digital in top quality sound. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a different world and uh, we are learning to live in it. Okay, I think if uh, if that's uh, if there's anyone, no one else that wants to add in there, I think we've had a good discussion. I think we've uh, got a clear understanding where we're going. Um, it's not a, it's not an easy way ahead, but we're part of it, and we're pioneers uh, into the uh, digital revolution, and um, it's it's exciting. Let's just find the, the right way forward to help each other. Thanks, Natalie. Can I, I don't know if there's anything, can I head back to you here? Thank you, Dave. Um, I just wanted to say, I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of you at the conference um, next month. Um, and if you haven't registered yet, um, do consider registering to come. It's really going to be a great conference with great speakers. So I'm looking forward to seeing you then. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much.